I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll see Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans as they square off with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. With that, let's get up to Seattle. Standing by at CenturyLink Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Well, Coach, no rain in the forecast. That's the good news, but it is a chilly December day here in the Northwest at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Tennessee Titans. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? The AFC's Pro Bowl kicker from a year ago, Jason Myers, will get us started. And off we go from Seattle. This is fielded at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Titans' offense will be under the direction of Ryan Tannehill. His first year with Tennessee after spending the last seven in Miami had some good numbers along the way, but the Dolphins were without a playoff victory during his run at quarterback. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Tannehill off the bootleg. It's caught, Smith. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Now a first-time 1,000-yard rusher from a season ago. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Here we go! Thank you, Gator! This a quick pass to Davis. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. And we roll now on the graphics for the offensive starters. Let's take a look at the left tackle, Taylor Lewan. A big, gregarious guy with great athletic ability. Plays the game with a little bit of an edge. In fact, he doesn't play to the whistle. He plays to the echo of the whistle. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 31-yard line. That's an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, Help is going to be a little bit late getting there, and he puts one out there for a big-time completion. Come on, set. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10, down at the 31. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And this one caught by Delaney Walker. 
And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the I'm defense, ready. it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Okay, I'm not so great at math, but I just looked over at our statistician, Marvin, and he signaled to me five for five to get things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you got to make a decision as, your defensive, as a defensive coordinator. Do you really get after the quarterback? Or maybe you tighten down on the receivers, bump them off of their routes, chip away at their timing so things aren't as precise as they've been in so far in this game. Up of five here, second and five. This is Deion Lewis now in his ninth NFL season, and he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four yard pickup leaves him with third and one. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. From the gun, here's Tannehill. The quick slant caught. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. That was a really good opening drive on a number of fronts. Ten plays, very methodical, set the tone. So you know right now, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're on the sideline saying, okay, what do we have to dial up in order to get off the field a lot faster? Because both sides are out there for ten plays, but one side comes off energized, and the other side comes off with some questions. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And it's now a 7-0 game. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a Tennessee score. Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. They're led onto the field by their quarterback, a man who's made quite the name for himself in the NFL, and that's Russell Wilson. And when I think of Russell Wilson, I think not just of the big plays that he's made, and those are considerable, but when they were made. Fourth and 26 in a Big Ten championship game against Michigan State when he was with Wisconsin. A big completion helped lead his team to a victory. A big fourth down throw for a touchdown in an NFC championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. When the chips are down, this guy plays at a big level. Second and six, just inside the 30. I don't think you got it, sir. Now it's Wilson. That's complete to D.K. Metcalf. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. And that's good for a 
Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. This is Chris Carson, 1,000-yard rusher a year ago. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Kenny Vaccaro is an excellent player. Can cover in the slot, but his best attributes, tackling people and rushing the quarterback. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. I got you, boy. I got you, boy. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 23. Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in, with, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I didn't want offer it. mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. <laughs> Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. Alert 16. Alert 16. Single, single. Going quickly out wide to Moore. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. From the gun, it's Wilson. Here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. When a linebacker's able to sit at the second level and see things develop in front of him, as soon as he got a hint that the quarterback was checking it down, he just made a beeline directly for the receiver and ended up making the play. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. And oh my goodness, what a catch at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His passing has been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Now it's Carson, and he will score! Touchdown, Seattle! A six-yard touchdown run as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point up and through by Myers. And we are tied at seven. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here we go. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Here's Tannehill. And Walker has it. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. The end result, 21 yards. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now Lewis here on first down. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. Snap. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Henry. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Right there. 54, right there. 54, come on. 54, let's go. Derrick Henry. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. No surprise there. Jadevian Klein with a tackle for loss. We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football, though, don't we remember? Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big-time play. It was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. Seven, and on third down, seven, a nickel eight, formation eight, here defensively. Let's put that team on the right Back to throw, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. The linebacker Bobby Wagner able to get back in coverage and knock it free. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, here's the Tennessee field goal unit led by Ryan Succo. From the right hash, this from 53. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. to seven. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Joseph now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. 
And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. A gain of six there on first. That's certainly one way to beat the blitz. Get it out of your hands quickly and get it to the big fella. Very effective. Saw the pressure, got rid of it, and the completion ensued. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now it's Wilson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and that'll make it third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs gonna throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. He's got Lockett. And he's taken down right at the 45 yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45 yard line. This is Carson. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. He lost four there, and it's third down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Play action, it's Wilson. He may try and run for this. And he's gonna have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 34 yard line. You and I both know most coaches are really fearful about their quarterbacks running with the ball. They don't want him to take that big hit. I don't think they worry about that with Russell Wilson. He's so smart in what he does, and we just saw it there on that scramble. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Wilson now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. Now a give right side. It's Carson, and he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. On second and nine, Wilson. A yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 
Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Wilson. And he's got it. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Now Wilson, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out, and the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, You've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Myers connects on the PAT, and the lead is now 14 to 10. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was Russell Wilson finishing things off with a touchdown run. the touchdown here's Myers to boot it away this will be taken in at the one and he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23 yard line and here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field and fortunate to get points on the board last time they had to hit a really long field goal to do so the kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Tackle made by Ziggy Ansah. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, here's Henry. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Now Tannehill. And he locates Walker, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down.
So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. This is Henry. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second and five now. Tannehill throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. The Titans on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and five. Tannehill now to throw. He finds Humphreys. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Let's go. Let's do it. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. Tannehill now, 9 of 11 passing in this first half. He's got his guys at first and 10. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Tiny. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Here we go, D. Tannehill. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Joseph now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. 
The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They run it with Carson. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Wilson turns and gives to Procise, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And the Seahawks on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He hits his running back, Procise. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A pickup of 27. And they pick up the first down in the process. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Watch, I can't believe they let you play. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. From the shotgun, Wilson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Let's go, defense. Let's go, defense. Oh, here we go. Throwing on second and eight, Wilson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now, leading his offense back out there. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing, and I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with... Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall that they could put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. 
Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. Imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now it's Henry. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one yard line. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. They've got to do a better job up front and create some space because they're right there, almost literally on their own goal line. Just a couple of feet away from a safety. That could have been disastrous. The Titans on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and 19. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Here's Brett Kern now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Now it's Lockett. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. As we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Throwing on second and eight. Wilson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Seahawks on third down. No problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This is third and eight. To throw is Wilson. And an alley to run. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. What? Wilson now 14 out of 17, 82%, and it's first and 10. tuck it and run. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Throwing on second and eight. Wilson, he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. The reception good for seven. It's third down. 
And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. You give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Carson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime preview. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. Did I do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print, I'm going to read it. I'm Brandon Gauden. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. There's Wilson to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Yeah, with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Sliding out of the pocket. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. Russell Wilson with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead is up to eight. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was Russell Wilson finishing things off with a touchdown run.
after the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's Tannehill. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Throwing the out route and complete. It's Walker. On, now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Tannehill now, 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. Throwing again is Tannehill. This will be caught by Brown. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they yeah, did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Tannehill throwing again. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Again, Tannehill. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. But now it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. To the air again, Tannehill. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And he didn't get it there. No, it's no good. Just shy of the crossbar. 
So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. the advantage and they get the football first as the second half is underway. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23 yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Coming to you, coming to you. Wilson going to hand it to Procise. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Third and long, it's Wilson. He may try and run for this. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Titan football. And Delaney Walker now getting set to go again. And we peek at some of his work from this game where he's nearing 100 yards. And haven't we gotten pretty close in this game nowadays in the NFL to almost taking labels off of the tight end position? These guys now can be the number one option in an offense, and that never used to be the case. So now how do you even match up with them? Cornerback, safety, linebacker, all three will have deficiencies against the best tight ends in the game. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Again, it's Henry. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. First down, Titans gain of 12. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. On the 
A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Complete, this is Lewis. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. This a quick pass to Davis. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First down, that was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. The tackle there by Quandre Diggs. Was the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second and seven, Tannehill. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll run on first down. Carson trying to run inside, but nothing there. The big man, Jarrell Casey, in on the stop. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. On first down, it's Carson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was. Because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. They run again with Carson. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Wilson now to throw on third down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I'd love to sit down at some point in our offseason and talk to these defensive coordinators in the red zone. Tight end is obviously a big threat, yet these guys continue to make plays. Is there any other way to stop them? 
Apparently not. In the red zone, like you said, that's your guy that got it to him. Supreme confidence in going to a playmaker. They'll try and run down here with Prosize. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll try to run with Carson. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? From the gun, it's Wilson. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Jason. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Check 52. A first down carry for Henry. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. 
A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run with Henry. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. A second down run with Lewis, and he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. Got a man, it's Brown. And they'll get this down to the 10. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Tannehill now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Got a man, it's Humphreys. Touchdown, Tennessee. Ten yards on the touchdown pass as his guys are back within a single score. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. Empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. Well, they tried to get two and ended up getting none because the quarterback had nowhere to go. The ball ends up getting sacked. Nowhere to go at all. Great job, though, defensively. They were ready. Joseph now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him with contract time. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Jeffrey Simmons showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. 
No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Now Wilson. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. The tally there, minus two yards. Brings up third down. The last catch took him two yards in the wrong direction. So now what can they do on third? From the gun, Wilson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Daquan Jones fighting his way home to get the sack. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here comes Humphreys on the return. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. First down, Titans gain of 12. But he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Ready, ready. 54 is Mike. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. It's been a long day for you. Get it. On first down, Tannehill. He's got Lewis. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. First down, Titans gain of 12. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Ready, ready. Eight, three. Ready, go. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Ten logo. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Two. Now on second and 13. Tannehill. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. 
Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Here's Tannehill. Dumps it off to Lewis. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Tannehill. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down at the two yard line. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pick up through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Now Tannehill. And that is caught. Walker, touchdown Titans. Three touchdown passes now for Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans have once again taken the lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. So a big two-point conversion attempt forthcoming for the Titans. To throw is Tannehill. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Only three there on the screen at second down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Wilson. He'll try and run it. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three. But now it's third down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. From the gun on third down, Wilson. That's caught by Hollister. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going.
Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. Hit from behind. He's going to be driven down. Jadevian Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Henry out of the pistol. Nine yards on the gain there, so he got half of it back, and it'll be third down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. That's Ziggy Ansah, the number five pick in 2013, credited with a sack. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt, not too shabby. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. And out now come the Seahawks. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in. And a the ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Kenny Vaccaro. And he'll bring it all the way back, just a yard or two shy of midfield. Let's go. And that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, leverage. Big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. Yeah. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Now, this one complete to Corey Davis. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 
Give them 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Henry. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. to his right. He's going to take off with it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now Tannehill, and that is caught by Davis for a Tennessee touchdown. Make that now four touchdown passes for Ryan Tannehill, and the Titans are able to extend their lead. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it, tight window, zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Extra point try now for Sacco. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. That time, a six-play drive. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. Joseph now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you're two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. That's right. Right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And they work this well upfield across the 45. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown.
A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Cameron Wake with a little wake-up call as he gets in there for the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. So following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Here's Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. On third down, Carson. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed two. He got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down and a yard. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Fourth down. Here's Wilson. And no, it's incomplete. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. They begin with Henry. And an alley to run. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Tennessee getting the first down on a big play of 18 yards. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Tannehill. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Pass the 20. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a Seattle touchdown. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know, that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. The extra point now coming from Myers. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown.
So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game, and you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays. But it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Shotgun handoff for Lewis. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. On second and nine, Tannehill. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Gotta love the catch. I think you gotta love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great, and they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum right there. Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. And look at this. It's a fake. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Throwing again on second down. Wilson, it's caught, lock it. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That'll pick up the first down for Seattle on a gain of 18. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Wilson gives to Procise on the delay. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. 
Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Back to throw. It's complete to lock it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 22-yard line. Very sharp here to start this drive, three for three. Yeah, I like the way he's running this two-minute drill. Very sharp, very precise in throwing the football. First down now, but that clock rolling. 26 mark, 26 mark. Now Wilson. He hits his running back, Procise. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make it a second down. Clock's under a minute. Still plenty of time, partner. They have all three timeouts. That means they have plenty of options in their play calling and where they target on the field. They can throw it downfield, maybe even in the middle, and use their timeouts. Throwing now is Wilson. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. I'm a little surprised right here. They've got three timeouts left. The clock's running down, and they aren't using them. Those timeouts do you no good at home. Use them now. course with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal Wilson after the play fake to Carson and this is caught touchdown and they've taken the lead here in the final minute how many people watching this one right here who gave up because that score they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah. What looks like is going to be the game-deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. Now Myers for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminates with a Seattle score. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So now Tannehill and the Titans down by four, 24 seconds to go. They've surrendered a double-digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now it's Tannehill. Under 
pressure, and he's going to go down. Tannehill sacked. So they'll quickly now signal for the timeout. And it's definitely not looking good, but at least they'll have one final play to hope for that miracle and get him in the end zone. Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. One last throw here for Tannehill. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. So the victory here for Seattle. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.